In this video I'm going to show you how your cartoon animator characters can pick up or pick things up or at least interact with props. Hi, I'm David Arundel, otherwise known as the Extraordinary Tourist and sometimes known as the Lazy Animator. And in this video I'm going to show you a few different techniques for how you can make your cartoon animator characters interact with props and specifically how you can get them to hold props in their hands. So we're just going to get straight into it and have a look at my demonstration animation. So here we have my short demonstration animation set up with my desert scavenger character here. He's a Jedi of sorts and I'll just play through this through for you so you can see what's going on and then I'll explain sort of how the various props are placed into the character's hands. So here we go, I'll just play this animation from the start. It's going to loop, so let it loop a couple of times so you can see what's going on. So there we go, that was the animation. I'm just going to go through the various techniques in order to show you how that was done. And we'll also open up the timeline so you can see some of the key frames and stuff that are going on. Uh, the whole animation, I've just got this standing motion here in the clip that's looped three times. And it's just a clip where the character stands idly, sort of changing her feet over while she's waiting for something. And then I've just modified that all the way through with my various keyframes. So to get things started, see her light lightsaber is a prop off the side of the screen over here. And she just turns, puts her hand out, and you see I've this character on this side has sprite hands, this one has bone hands, just to sort of show the differences. You see at this point, about here, this is still a separate prop. So if I go into the motion key editor, and you'll see here if I move her arm at the moment, uh, nothing, the prop's not attached to it in any way. Just undo that and we'll step to the next frame. At this point, I've now linked this prop to her hand uh, using the link function up here. So if I was to click this, I've got the link function going. You see there, uh, this link function puts a keyframe right there. So that's now linked to her arm. So you'll see now when I move her arm anywhere, that prop's just going to follow it. I don't have to do anything, think about it, or keep it aligned with her hand at all. And while that is in her hand, I can still do keyframes for the prop itself. Whenever you move the character's arm itself, the actual prop will follow the arm as well as do whatever, whatever the animation is you're doing with the prop. And with right hand characters, if you've got a character that you've um, purchased from the marketplace that comes with its own accessories, uh, such as this one here, which this Desert Scavenger you can buy in the marketplace from my store, it's always a good idea to check out the sprites within the character. Because you'll see within this character, I've got some sprites down here that are specifically there when she's holding her staff and her lightsaber. So um, that hand's been changed to this hand, which is a special hand that sort of matches or fits perfectly with her lightsaber or her staff. And if you don't have that, you sort of just have to try and find a sprite hand that best suits the actual prop and looks like it's holding the, the prop, or you could perhaps create your own version of a sprite hand and load it into the character as you need it. So that's how that's done. We'll keep going through. So at this point, all I did there was swap the sprite in my lightsaber. So if I go into the sprites for that, it's got an off version and an on version. So I just flip them over. Now there's a point in here where this sprite, I actually turn it off. When she swaps hands, you'll see at this point, when she swaps hands, uh, I'm using another trick to make it look like uh, this hand is in front of that. Because normally, um, you wouldn't be able to achieve this with a prop. Like having a separate prop go in between hands like this, it would either be on top or be behind all of them. What I've done here is on the character, I've now got this hand here. 
but I believe that is actually a separate prop. You can see here, um, if I go into the scene here, see this prop is the Devit Sca Desert Scavenger Mark II uh, hand for the staff, and this comes with the character as a separate prop. And what I did was I lined this up with her actual sprite hand using the version of this hand that comes with the sprites. So uh, if I turn that hand off, you'll see that she doesn't actually have a hand here. Now select her as a character, go into the sprites, you see this hand is selected but I've turned the opacity off because if that hand was on at this point, you see it goes behind her actual lightsaber which is not what we want. So I got that hand into position, turned it off after I'd lined up my prop hand and linked it to this hand. Uh, so that it would basically move. This prop hand is linked to her original hand bone, so it moves just like the other hand should. So that's just, again, still just her separate prop lightsaber. It's still in the prop section here. But you'll see it coming up here. I wanted her to let go of the actual lightsaber and have some of her other prop hands show up. So at this point, all of that is still the prop lightsaber and you'll see there now uh, this prop lightsaber has actually been turned off you can see here the visibility up the top here is switched off and if we go into visibility here you see in the track it's been switched off but the lightsaber is still there uh, this lightsaber here is now an accessory of the character so that I can put it anywhere between the layers of the character and have her other hands show up and what have you in front of it and all I did to do that was turn that accessory on so you can see this point in the character we've got the lightsaber here and you can see there's a keyframe for this accessory lightsaber up with the actor so it's listed under the actor instead of in the prop so that's been turned off the whole time you can see if I open up this character in the composer see here that she's got the lightsaber attached to her belt and it's all the layers are sorted out so it's in the right spot so that's been with the character from the beginning it was just turned off to begin with and because that's there I'm able to have her hook it onto the belt with the prop and once it's hooked on turn off her prop hand here as you saw there that prop hand here turned off from that point as you can see the visibility is turned off and it's just the accessory prop that's being animated and her normal sprite hands are in front of it. So hopefully you were, a you were able to follow along with what I did there. And all of that's done with sprite hands, accessories, and this was an actual individual prop to start with. We move on to this character. We'll go back to uh, where her actual staff comes in. She's got actual bone hands, so if we go uh, into the motion key editor to begin with, you'll see uh, she's got the little hand pose editor here. Got all the bones in her hands, pretty much how she works. Uh, for the most part, I never really do anything to try and pose her fingers individually. I always try and go with the um, template hand poses and try to make them work uh, because it gets really fiddly if you start trying to keyframe every single individual uh, finger. So if you can get away with just using the templates for most things, then I would sort of suggest you do that. Only get down to keyframing fingers if you're doing something really close up on the hands and it's really important that you get accurate movements. But for this character, um, her staff is off the side here. You can see that's a prop. But just like this character, if I go into the composer, you'll, sh you'll see that I've actually given her two staffs as accessories. You can see here I've got a staff in each hand, like both of these staffs are linked to a hand so this staff here is linked to this hand and this staff is linked to that hand and I've got them in the layer order that I need them uh, so that they sort of go behind or in front of whatever they need to be so and obviously when the animation starts both of these have their visibility switched off so that you can't see them there you go, she actually has a staff in each hand, uh, you can see them here, but both of them are turned off up here, and this particular staff that's coming in is a prop staff. That comes in, and 
there. I believe it's still a prop. Do all the prop stuff. Drop through, and at that point, uh, you can see now switched over to the accessory staff, and my prop staff is invisible. So if we look at in the visibility track there it's been turned off and we're now working with this staff which is uh, the one that was attached to this hand and as you can see the fingers on that staff on her hand I've just gone with something that looks like she's holding it obviously I could improve how her thumb is on that uh, but it's very hard to make the bone hands sort of wrap around and actually have things holding onto like the characters holding the props Properly, so you just want to sort of approximate it and if you really wanted them to hold the prop properly I would recommend sort of perhaps creating your own hand that actually has the prop in there or uh, Potentially if you've got a prop that comes with it Maybe the person that made that prop may have provided you with a version of it that has the hands included on the prop Another way to go, uh, but that kind of thing's not always available as it isn't for my character and with the bone hands can't really swap out to anything uh, because she doesn't have any sprite hands you've only got this palm here and you've got no option to play around with the fingers within the sprite editor so yeah you just have to sort of eyeball it and get something that looks reasonably good but uh, this was switched to the accessory prop because coming up here you'll see staff goes behind her head but it's in front of her hand and that's why it needs to be the accessory prop and not the individual prop so that you can do this kind of thing and have the staff go between the right levels of the character. Keep going and then you'll see she swap hands, swaps hands. And this is the reason why she has a staff in each hand uh, because this particular staff here is linked to that hand so you'll see if I open up 2D motion key editor and I select say this arm and move it around you'll see the staff moves with that arm now there's no way to actually at least that I'm aware of that you can take an accessory and unlink it from the bone that it's linked to in during your animation and you can't go into the composer and swap the links over because that'll ruin it uh, your keyframes from earlier I believe so that's why I've got the two props one for each hand so when this moves over and we'll get out of this this point it's still the prop accessory for this hand now it's switched over to the prop for this hand so be there that's the prop for this hand We've got a keyframe in the visibility thing. The quarter staff down here turns off, and now this staff comes up, and you'll see down here it's got the visibility turned on. And now that's how you how I swap the hands. You'll see uh, when I open up the 2D motion key editor now, and I select this arm. See that quarter staff is now attached to the other hand. That's basically how I made her swap hands and also that brings the staff to the front in front of her legs and hips whereas over here it was behind them a little bit and she's able to sort of move it in front of her face and all that as well and that takes us up to the end of the animation so uh, hopefully you were able to get something from that and sort of follow along how these things were attached to the hands. Uh, obviously when you want a character to put something down, you unlink the prop so that the prop no longer follows the character's movements. Uh, you, I'm fairly certain you should be able to work that bit out. So I'd show you some of these more, I wouldn't say they're advanced techniques, but sort of some of the nuances of making characters pick things up, switch hands over and how you can do those sorts of things by combining sort of the actual props, turning props into accessories and changing up their visibility between the different versions of the prop so that everything all looks like one smooth motion of a character picking up and interacting with whatever props you're using. So I hope you found that demonstration useful. Um, getting characters to interact with props and hold them in their hands and that kind of thing. It's not really difficult to do, it's just sort of knowing when to uh, just use the linking function and sort of link a prop to your character's hands or when you need to actually turn that prop into an accessory so that you can get the layering right and have the prop better interact with the 
character. Uh, as I say, it's, it's not that difficult to do. It's just knowing uh, when you actually need to do that. If you can get away uh, with just linking the prop to the character without having to turn props into accessories, that's the ideal thing to do. But just know that you can get around uh, having the prop be more interactive and be on the right layer of your character just by turning it into an accessory. And be aware that um, some characters with sprite hands sometimes comes with sprites specifically designed for holding the props that come with them. Uh, uh, if you don't have those sprites, you sort of have to choose a hand position that most looks like a character is holding the prop. And the same with bone hands, uh, you can fiddle around and keyframe all the individual fingers to try and get the character to look more like they're holding the prop. But uh, I tend to find that if you can get away with just using the template bone hand positions and get whatever's closest to looking like your character is holding the prop, it's just easier to go with that and a lot less headaches. Uh, I wouldn't get into keyframing individual fingers unless you're really getting close up on the hands and uh, needing to be super accurate with how a character is holding whatever item they're holding. So that's it. I'll leave that there. Again, hope you found this useful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Oh, my God.